Hi, and we're wrapping up Chapter 10 this week, and you'll be taking a quiz, or a, I'm sorry, a test at the end of the week. And we're going to wrap things up by doing some word problems involving solving quadratics to finish up the chapter. And I'm going to pass out these worksheets to you, and we're going to have some time um, over the next couple of days to maneuver through them. So what I wanted to do on this video is just kind of walk through a couple of the problems over the worksheets to give you some samples. So when you have time in class to work through them, you'll have an example that you've had a chance to see. All right? So one of the worksheets that you have is called projectile motion. And there's some projectile motion problems. So we'll go ahead and we'll just go through one of these together to make sure you understand um, what you would need to do to get these. So it says a rock is thrown directly upward with initial velocity of 64 feet per second. So remember, when we're using projectile motion, we have this formula. And on this formula, remember it's projectile motion. They just said the initial velocity is 64, which means that that's going to be V. And the, height, the rock was released at a height of 7 feet, which means S is 7. And so you can see they, they replaced those into this formula, so we have that here. We want to know how high is the rock after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds. Um, and then it says, use the graphing calculator to graph the equation. Use the trace feature of the calculator to find the following. I normally don't use the trace feature. I'll show you why. And it says, what is the maximum height attained by the rock? How many seconds does this take? Okay. So let's go through this. I'm going to get my calculator out right now. And you can see I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in, and you should probably put this in your calculator as you're watching. I'm doing negative 16 t, well, I'll use x squared, t squared, plus 64 t plus the rock was thrown from initial height of 7, remember. Okay, so remember that it was 7. So you can see that here. All right. And now what I want to do is I'm going to make a graph of this real quick so I can see the graph. And you notice I'm getting a parabola. And they're asking us what was the height of the rock after um, 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, and 4 seconds. So I can go to my table, and I'll make a table, and if I go to my table, the answer is right on my table. After one second, the rock was 55 feet high. After two seconds, it was 71 feet high. After three seconds, it was 55 feet high. And after four seconds, it was seven feet high. So I can just go ahead and write those in on my worksheet, 55, 71, 55, and 7. So I'm going to do that right now, 55. 71, 55, and 7. Very simple to do that. Now the next thing. Use a graphing calculator to graph it. I already did that. Use the tray. I wouldn't do that at all. What is the maximum height attained by the rock? Now think about that for a minute. Your parabola was this. Isn't the maximum height at the vertex? Remember that from our sketching? The maximum height has to be the vertex. Well, finding the vertex is easy. Instead of using this trace feature, I can quickly just go ahead get my axis of symmetry, so I'm going to do that. I have the opposite of 64 over 2 times negative 16, which means I have negative 64, oops, I wasn't writing good here, negative 64 over negative 32. That's positive 2. My vertex must be at 2 something. Well, didn't we already see that at 2 seconds the height was 71? We just found our maximum height. The vertex is at 271. The maximum height had to be at 71. After how many seconds did the rock hit the ground? Well, this is where we would want to see our graph in our table. So let me go back. Let's go back and graph that again. It looks to me like when I'm looking at this carefully, it looks, oops, let me get back here. It looks like to me, our graph is touching the x-axis at about 1, 2, 3, 4 seconds, roughly, at about 4 seconds. So if I want to find that, let's go ahead and change my table. 
I'm going to start it at four seconds, and I want to go up by tenths just in case I need to round this. So let's see, where did that rock hit the ground? You can see right here at 4.1 seconds, the rock was almost hitting the ground at 4.2 seconds, it's saying underground, which doesn't, you know. So we're crossing zero in between 4.1 and 4.2. We're definitely closer to zero at 0 .44 or 44 hundredths than negative 6.44. So 4.1 seconds is the closest tenth to when the rock hit the ground. So it would be, let me go back to my sheet here, it would be at about 4.1 seconds the rock hit the ground. And you'll see on the rest of this worksheet that we have, let me go back to the worksheet again, you'll see on the rest of the worksheet that the problems for the most part are those kind of questions on that first sheet. So I think going through one of those should be fine. Okay. Um, let's do one of these here on this other sheet, uh, word problems involving area. Now these are going to, we're going to have to use quadratics to solve. So maybe we'll do a couple of these. Let's just do this uh, question number three. I typically put a question like this on my chapter test each year. So I'm just going to freeze this here and I can write on this now. So I'm going to do number three. Like I said, again, I, I typically put a question like this on my test. So you have 60 feet of fencing to fence in part of your backyard for your dog. Okay, you want to make a you want to make sure your dog has 400 square feet of space to run around in. The back of your home will serve as one side of the enclosure. So you can see here's your home right here. This is your home, and then you have 60 feet of fence. So your 60 feet would have to be from here to here to here, that's your 60 feet. So think about that. If you have a rectangle, you have width, you have length, and you have width. So if I take, if I take width plus length plus width, it's supposed to equal 60 feet. Because remember, the fourth side is, is bounded or boundary by your home. So that's not part of your fencing. So in other words, 2w plus l should equal 60 feet. So I have an equation there. I'm going to save that equation. It has two variables. Remember, when you have two variables, you need two equations to solve when you have two variables. This takes us back to Chapter 7. Remember, in Chapter 7, we learned about substitution. We learned about the elimination. You know, those were the two work methods that we could use to solve a system. Now there's one more part to this. You want to make sure your dog has 400 square feet of space to run around in. So I want 400 square feet in here. Now remember, a rectangle length times width would give you area. So if you take the length times the width of this backyard, you want it to equal 400. Well, there's a second equation. I have a system. I have two equations I need to solve. I think the easiest way to solve would be to use substitution. So let me, before I, I guess I'm maybe getting a little ahead of myself, um, I've wrote these two equations in part A. Write an equation to find the area of your dog pen. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do it by using substitution. First of all, remember in substitution, you've got to take one of these two equations and get one of the variables isolated. Well, when I look at this equation, it would be very easy for me to isolate the variable L. I can take away 2W from each side. And when I take away 2w from each side, I get L is 60 minus 2w. What I can now do is, since I know that L is the same as 60 minus 2w, I can go to this equation, and where I see L, I can substitute in, I can substitute in 60 minus 2w. So let's do that. When I do that, I get the equation 60 minus 2w times W equals 400. All right. 
I've got to solve this. Well, to solve it, first of all, I'd have to distribute the W through. So I have 60W. I'm just going to write down here. 60W minus 2W squared equals 400. Now, there's a bunch of ways I could solve this. I could try to factor it. I could try to, I guess I'm going to try to factor it first just because I always said factoring is, is, I always try that first. I've got to get everything on one side and zero on the other. So I'm just going to move this stuff on the left over to the right. So if I add 2w squared to each side, I get 2w squared on the right. I've got to take away 60w from each side and then I still have the plus 400. I just moved everything from the left over to the right because now my lead coefficient is positive. I know I can divide everything by 2, so I'm going to factor out a 2. And now the question is, can I find something times something that multiplies out to 200 and yet adds up to negative 30? And I can do that off the top of my head real quick. Isn't negative 10 times negative 20 positive 200 and isn't negative 10 plus negative 20 negative 30 well there's my factoring w minus 20 and w minus 30 I'm sorry minus 10 I meant to say w minus 40 w minus 10 negative 10 negative 20 which means this has to equal 0 or that which means I could get 20 or 10 so there's two possible scenarios for this fencing that will give you 60 feet of fencing and yet the enclosure is 400 square feet. If the width is 20, that will work. So let's do that real quick. I'll do that one in black. So if this is 20 for width and this is 20 for width and I have 60 feet of fencing, the length must be 20 also. So let's check. Is 20, 20, and 20 going to add up to 60? And yes, it does and is 20 times 20, 400? Yes, it is. So one possible combination would be length is 20 feet, width is 20 feet. But there's one other possible combination. The width could be 10. Maybe I'll do this in blue. If the width is 10 here, it would also be 10 here. And since you have 60 feet of fencing, 10 plus 40 plus 10, so this length would be 40, would give me 60 feet of fencing, is 10 times 40, 400 for area? Yes, it is. So you have a second possible length width combination. The length could be 40 and the width could be 20 feet. Oh, I misspoke. 10 feet, I meant to say. 10 feet, 40 by 10. Okay, so there's two possible combinations there. Now, of course, I factored to solve this. I suppose if you wanted to, you could have solved this by any of the methods we learned. You could have put it in your calculator, tried to graph it, and use a table. I guess you could have tried completing a square to solve it um, and using square roots. So, yeah, you could have used any, you could have used the quadratic formula if you wanted to. I, I didn't use the quadratic formula because I, I was like, these numbers didn't look bad. I'm going to try to factor it first, and it was worth it because it was easy to factor. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. Just again, I just want to do one from each sheet just to give you an example problem from each. Um, maybe one like on the back here. Uh, let's do one of these. And they give me the area of a triangle. And remember, on a triangle, area equals one-half base times height. They tell me the triangle has an area of 52, so I'll plug in 52 for area. The base looks to be x plus 6, and the height is x plus 5. I want to solve for x. Find the value of x. Okay, well, first of all, I don't like this half in here, so that's easy to fix. If I multiply each side by 2 real quick, maybe I'll just write it out this way. I'll multiply over here by 2 which means I'm multiplying the right side by 2. Well, when you do that, you get 104 over here. On the right side, remember, we're not distributing the 2. It's just 2 times this, times this, times this. When you take 2 times half, you get 1. 
And now I have 1 times x plus 6 times x plus 5. And in reality, the 1 isn't even important. When I take 1 times x plus 6, I get that. Right? So all I got to do is, is double distribute here. So I have 104 equals x squared plus 5x plus 6x plus 30. Since I have a qu uh, quadratic, um, I guess I'm going to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. So I'll take away 104 from each side. I have x squared plus 11x, and i got to take away 104. That's minus 74. Now, I don't know if I can factor this. I'm going to try real quick just in case. Uh, I'm just trying a couple things. 74 divided by 6 doesn't work. 74. Um, doesn't look offhand like this is going to be easy to factor, so I'm about ready to bag trying to do that. So I'm not finding anything off the top of my head that's working. Okay, so if that's not going to work, maybe for this I'll use the quadratic formula today. All right, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. I want to find x, so I'm going to quickly do that. I'm going to take, remember x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I have negative b is 11, negative 11 plus or minus the square root b squared. I have 11 being squared, which is 121 minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 74 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. And let's work out what's inside here. Let's work out that discriminant, figure out that. Um, I'm just taking 121 real quick, minus 4 times 1 times negative 74. That's giving me 417 all over 2. And let me get the square root of 417 real quick. Square root of 417, I'm just typing that in my calculator. It's about 20 point, since they want hundreds, it's about 20.42. So this is really negative 11 plus or minus 20.42 over 2. Okay, so I get two roots. Let's do the addition first. Negative 11 plus 20.42. That's 9.42, and I divide that by 2. I get 4.71. So one possible solution is 4.71. I'm not even going to bother with the other one. Because if I take negative 11 minus 20, I'm getting a negative amount, and a negative divided by 2 is a negative. Now think about it. Can your triangle, if I put these negative amounts in here, well, I guess, I, I guess let me just double check that. I, before I say that, let me just double check it. So negative 11 minus 20.42 is negative 31. Yeah, that's not going to work. I get negative 15 point. Seven, one. Well, look what happens if I plug a negative 15 in here. I'm going to get negative 10, roughly, which I can't have a height of negative 10. So this isn't going to work. So 4.71 would be the correct solution. Let me just double check that and make sure it works. If I put 4.71 in here, I get 9.71 feet in height. And if I put a 4.71 here, I get 10.71 feet in base. Well, let's see if this works. If I take area equals half times base times height, if I take area, which is 0.5, and I multiply by the 10.71 for base times the 9.71 for height, I'm getting 51 on my calculator, 0.99705, which is really close to 52. Well, that's what I'm supposed to be getting. So 4.71 would be the correct response for X, okay? I'm going to stop the video here. Again, I just wanted to do a few problems, uh, one of each, to kind of get you started on the worksheet so when you come in next week, um, you can get into this, all right?